Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, October 23rd, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. I always love it when we get some interesting malware from readers and can actually write about it. Didier did so today. We received an email from one of our readers that contained a compressed RTF attachment. Now, Didier is walking you through how to analyze such an email and how to use his tools, the little Python scripts, to do so quite quickly and efficiently. So it should be easy for you to follow if you run into a similar attachment yourself. Real-time operating systems or short RTOS are a popular family of operating systems that are often used for automation or well what's often called the Internet of Things. As of late 2017, Amazon took stewardship of free RTOS. That's a free real-time operating systems, as the name implies. And it's really based on sort of that same family of operating systems, like for example, Open RTOS, which is a commercial or for pay version of this operating system. Well, Symperium took a closer look at these operating systems and they found a number of remote code execution vulnerabilities and denial of service vulnerabilities that affected the TCP IP stack that comes in particular with free RTOS. That's the Amazon version that's also deployed via Amazon's cloud. Now, there are not a lot of details yet, and Symperium says that they'll wait a month until they'll release any details, but out of the 13 CVs, so 13 vulnerabilities that were published, we have four remote code execution vulnerabilities. So without these details, really hard to say how exploitable these vulnerabilities are or how an attacker would exactly go about exploiting them. But given that they are a part of the TCP IP stack, it's very likely that a system is exploitable as soon as it's connected to a network. The only question really here that's left is whether or not any packets that could trigger the exploit are routable or not. So by this time next month, more details will be released. At that point, we'll likely also see an exploit being published either by Symperium or by any third-party researchers. So better get on patching if you can. Now, it may be a little bit difficult to enumerate all the devices. Also, open RTOS apparently is vulnerable as well, even though Symperium only looked at the free RTOS version. Let me have a second vulnerability. This one is sort of one of those typical component vulnerabilities. It's in the Live 555 streaming library. Now, this is a streaming library that supports RTSP streaming, so video audio streaming. And in itself, you may not have heard of this library, but it is included in popular products like VLC and mPlayer. The vulnerability affects the ability of this library to create a service that can be used to access video and audio streams via RTSP and RTSP over HTTP. Cisco includes quite a bit of detail in its advisory that should allow someone to write an exploit for this rather quickly. So if you are using mPlayer or VLC or any other tool that does use the Live 555 video library, then you probably should patch quickly. Now, the way I understand it, you're only vulnerable if you're setting up a server. So as long as you're just downloading and viewing videos, this vulnerability would not affect you. But in particular, VLC, I often see used to stream videos, not just to view them. And Microsoft released a security update for Yammer. Yammer is Microsoft's enterprise communication suite or enterprise social network. It's also sometimes called. The problem here is that if a user clicks on a malicious link within this platform, remote code execution could happen. 
The update should be installed automatically on Windows machines. Now there is also a Mac version of Yammer. No update for that yet as far as I can tell and whether or not it's vulnerable, that's not really clear by looking at Microsoft's announcement. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.